When Halley's Comet passes near Earth, a crew of British and American astronauts led by Colonel Carlson go out on a space shuttle known as Churchill for research. Using a scanner, they end up discovering that there's a 150-mile-long spaceship hiding in the comet's tail, so a small team is sent to investigate. The spaceship seems to be organic and the astronauts marvel at the different structures they find inside. They're also shocked to discover hundreds of scrawny creatures that look like bats, but their bodies are so old and dead that it's easy to just break a finger by grabbing it. When the team grabs one of these creatures to take back for research, suddenly a huge spaceship appears above Churchill. At that moment in the spaceship, a hole in the wall begins glowing, scaring the astronauts. Carlson still orders them to go through it, and the crew reaches another room where they find three naked humanoid beings in suspended animation inside glass containers. There are two men and a woman, and Carlson can't help feeling drawn to her. The team ends up taking the three people together with one of the bats back with them. The trip back to Earth takes a month, and in the middle of it, Mission Control loses touch with Churchill. According to their findings, Churchill hasn't adjusted their course since they left the comet, so a rescue mission is sent to discover what happened. When this second team enters Churchill, they're shocked to discover that the ship has been completely devastated by fire, including the crew. The only things left intact are the cases with the humanoid beings. Then the rescue team looks for the ship's tape recordings, which are taken together with the trio to the European Space Research Center in London. Dr. Bukowski and Professor Falata watch over the beings, and Bukowski reports that the cases open on their own during the investigation. They want to dissect the bodies, but first they'll need Falata's confirmation that the bodies are dead. However, Falata doesn't have a way to determine if an alien is dead or not. Later in the evening, Bukowski watches the news, which are showing a report about Halley's Comet. It says that in ancient times, comets were considered harbingers of evil. Meanwhile in the operating room, the guard on duty is drawn to the unconscious female creature and slowly approaches her bed to try to touch her. Suddenly the woman wakes up and comes closer to the guard as she keeps him under her spell. Bukowski notices this on his security monitor and watches how the woman removes the guard's helmet, so he rushes out to help him. However it is too late, the alien is already kissing the guard, causing the lights to fail and a blue glow to appear around her as she drains all his life force. By the time Bukowski makes it to the operating room, the guard is nothing but an empty shell. At that moment, the woman emerges from a corner and approaches Bukowski, telling him to use her body. Meanwhile Falada is looking for his friend and sees what's going on in the monitor, so he also rushes out to help, bringing security with him. When they make it to the room, they find a very weak Bukowski on the floor. The alien woman has already left the room and is now walking around the research center, but Falada has raised the alarm and three guards immediately corner her. They try to capture her using food, but it's easy for her to defeat them with just a few movements of her hand that use that same blue energy. Falada also heads down to the main lobby to go after her, but the woman has already used her powers to break the glass doors and escape the building. Officials soon arrive at the scene, including Colonel Kane, the leader of the investigation. Bukowski and Falada take him to see the burnt guard, and when Kane asks Bukowski how the creature overpowered him, Bukowski confesses that the woman's charms overwhelmed him. Bukowski also reveals that the tapes from Churchill weren't destroyed in the fire, but the files were intentionally erased. And since an escape pod from Churchill is missing, all this implies that someone might have escaped. They've also scanned the creature's cases, but the X-ray only returned blurry images, which indicates that the cases aren't physical objects, Bukowski thinks that they actually may be force fields. After Bukowski excuses himself, Falada explains he thinks the woman drained the guard's life force and potentially a portion of Bukowski's. This makes Kane call the woman a vampire and Falada agrees. Meanwhile two guards watch over the two alien men and argue over if the creatures are alive or dead because they keep getting the feeling something is moving. Suddenly, the room explodes and all doors are destroyed. The aliens have woken up and are trying to escape, so the guards open fire but bullets do nothing to them. Next they try throwing grenades at them, which seem to defeat them to the point there are no bodies left. In the operation room, the doctors try to do an autopsy on the guard, but when they are about to start, the guard's decaying body comes back to life, giving them a good scare. Then the dead guard beckons one of the doctors for help, and the doctor approaches him, drawn to the creature like the others had been drawn to the woman. The guard immediately drains the life force out of him and thanks to this he returns to his normal form, however he also panics when he realizes what he's done. At that moment, a bunch of guards arrive and proceed to sedate him before locking him in isolation. Falada suggests isolating the fallen doctor's body as well, believing that it could reanimate like the guard. Kane receives a report about a desiccated female body found in a park, so they head there. Eyewitnesses claim that the woman was with another dark-haired woman that hadn't been wearing any clothes, but unfortunately nobody saw where the strange woman went. The investigators notice that the victim is missing her clothes and they guess the alien women took them. Sometime later, Kane and Falada show Sir Percy around the facility while they keep an eye on the victims of the aliens, who have been locked up. The guard is currently struggling because he craves life force from humans, and after two hours of failing to sustain himself and thrashing in his cell, the guard returns to his desiccated form. When they poke his body, it's revealed that his insides have turned into ashes. The fallen doctor also rampages in his cell, 
eventually exploding into ashes too. The woman from the park is strapped to a bed and she suddenly reanimates, shaking in such a way that she makes the cardiac monitors attached to her body explode right before she explodes as well. At that moment the team gets a call telling them that a Churchill escape pod has been found in Texas with Carlson inside, traumatized but alive. Soon Carlson is taken to London, where the executives welcome him and ask for details about what happened in Churchill. Carlson explains that they transported the aliens into the ship and kept them in a safe room for isolation, but during their journey back to Earth, the crew began to exhibit weird behaviors like destroying the ship's controls without remembering it later. One by one, the crew members died without any trace of how until Carlson was the only one left. Carlson believed that it was the alien's fault, and when Churchill was coming closer to Earth's orbit, he realized he had to stop the creatures from causing trouble on Earth too. He released gas inside the ship before setting the bat-like creature on fire, then he entered the escape pod just before the ship erupted. Carlson also admits that it had been hard for him to leave the alien woman. Later while Kane monitors Carlson in his sleep, Bukowski reports that an unusual structure has left Halley's Comet and is heading towards Earth. During his sleep, Carlson dreams about the alien woman and sees her appear in the shape of the bat-like creature. He's greatly afraid of her but at the same time he could feel a connection to her, and suddenly they start getting frisky while ignoring the chaotic lights around them. The woman begins taking his life force, not stopping when Carlson tells her it's too much. Suddenly Carlson wakes up screaming and claiming that the woman is draining him. The team decides to use hypnosis to assess his mental state, and it's revealed that Carlson's got a telepathic link to the female alien. He uses that link to discover that the woman has taken another person's body and is now sharing it with the original owner Ellen. It seems the alien is searching for a healthy man to drain, but not enough to kill. Carlson has a vision of the woman flirting with an elderly man who's driving her around, so Kane attempts to search for the elderly man using the license number that Carlson saw in his vision. Afterward Falada is studying an ancient sword he's recently purchased when someone brings him a tissue sample from the aliens, so he takes it to the lab for observation. There he receives the visit of a mysterious sergeant. In the meantime, Sir Percy reveals that the elderly man from the vision is dead, but he had shared that he dropped Ellen off at an asylum. Carlson, Kane, and Sir Percy travel to the asylum to meet with hospital director Dr. Armstrong, who takes them to Ellen's quarters. They question her about the elderly man, and when she says she doesn't know what this is about, Carlson gets violent, hitting her and pushing her against furniture. After some struggle, Carlson finally senses that the alien woman is no longer in her. Then Carlson interrogates Ellen again but Ellen resists because she also shares a connection with the alien woman. At that moment Ellen kisses Carlson and passes out. This incident allows Carlson to know the new body that the alien might be inhabiting. With Armstrong's help, they identify the description as belonging to a patient in solitary confinement. Carlson asks them to prepare the patient for hypnosis, but at the last second, he injects Armstrong with the sedative instead, revealing that he read Armstrong's mind and suspects that the alien woman is possessing him. Armstrong wiggles in pain and falls to the floor, where he quickly passes out. Then he's taken to a private room, where Carlson tries to talk to him, but Armstrong says the woman won't let him communicate before he screams. Carlson injects Armstrong again before the woman's voice begins speaking through him, teasing and tempting Carlson. She reveals that she and the two men took on human shapes when Carlson and his crew entered their ship and that the woman adapted her form using Carlson's thoughts, this also allowed him to learn his language. Carlson becomes agitated, shaking Armstrong's body as he begs the woman to let go of his mind, however he finds himself unable to resist the woman and kisses her through Armstrong's body. Suddenly, lights spark in the room, the blue glow appears, and items begin flying around while Carlson gets stuck holding Armstrong's body. Thankfully Kane cuts in and injects Armstrong with two more sedatives, instantly freeing Carlson who announces that they're too late to stop the woman. This makes Kane wonder if the woman deliberately led them away from London so she could continue to spread her influence there, meaning there are new victims in the city that will be seeking even more victims to keep on spreading this curse. Unfortunately, they discover that the flying objects killed Percy during the incident. Dragging the bodies with them, Carlson and Kane escape in a helicopter and get a call from Falada, who reveals that he killed one of the alien men by impaling him with an iron sword. It turns out the two alien men didn't die in the explosion they escaped by taking over the bodies of the guards. Falada has discovered that instead of the heart, the alien's weak point is a few inches below it, and he thinks that vampire legends are based on a past encounter with this alien race. At that moment, blood begins spewing from Armstrong's and Percy's orifices, causing the helicopter to start shaking. The blood gathers at one spot and slowly takes the shape of the alien woman before splattering. Then Carlson announces that the woman is no longer in Armstrong, but she is in London. He also finally confesses that he had been so captivated by her that he destroyed Churchill's control panel and the tapes, then he woke her from the cage and she took some of his life force while giving him some of hers by sharing a kiss. When the team makes it to London, they discover a plague has taken hold. Citizens have become rabid vampires and they're rampaging through the city, causing a wave of violence, chaos, and horror on every street. 
Carlson and Kane head to the Prime Minister's war room to discuss a possible plan, however they discover that the Prime Minister is also infected and is attacking his secretary. The duo quickly runs back to the helicopter to avoid all the infected soldiers in the office, and the pilot explains that the city is now under martial law. This means the helicopter must land at Blackheath, preventing Carlson and Kane from meeting with Falada. Some infected soldiers try to hold onto the helicopter, but one of them falls to its doom and the men shoot the other one. Afterward, Carlson and Kane are taken by a military patrol to a quarantine facility outside the city limits, where they talk to the authorities to let them return to the city to help. The soldiers tell them that the ship from Halley's Comet is parked right above London, and when they go outside, they find a beam of blue light going up to the sky and into the ship. Carlson identifies the blue lights as human souls being collected by the ship. In the city, the light beam goes through the streets to pick up those souls. Suddenly Carlson can feel the woman calling out to him, understanding that she wants to retrieve the energy she gave him back in Churchill. Carlson also realizes that the alien men will come for them once he finds the woman. Hearing this, Kane begs the military to stop the assault on London, explaining that the only way to end the plague is to kill the aliens. At that moment, Kane hears that Carlson has escaped to London, so Kane takes a car to follow him as he ignores the soldiers' warnings. When he makes it to the city, Kane heads to the research facility thinking Carlson is going there, but actually Carlson is searching for the woman. He keeps having visions of her, and this distraction allows a horde to attack his car, but he manages to run over them to escape. Eventually he arrives at St. Paul's Cathedral, where he finally finds the alien woman with a pile of drained bodies. At the facility, Kane finds Falada in his office with the body of an alien man. Falada explains that Bukowski and all the others have died but somehow he survived, and Kane realizes that he has been infected. Kane immediately shoots him, and while his soul comes out of Falada's body, Kane retrieves the sword from the alien's body, causing it to turn into ashes. When he makes it to the door, he finds the streets on fire, but he has no choice but to run outside because there's another horde behind him. Meanwhile Carlson finds the woman lying on the altar as the central point of the life force being drained from Earth. Carlson is still magically drawn to her but this time he's at least aware of her intentions. When the woman tries to persuade Carlson to join her as she ascends into the light, he manages to remain still. Kane heads to the cathedral, but hordes of infected people run after him, often leaving him cornered in small spaces. At that moment the blue lights arrive at this part of the city, taking the life forces of the victims and opening the way for Kane. He finally arrives at the cathedral and finds the second alien man standing at the doorway, consuming the life forces from the infected people. Kane stabs him with the sword and watches him transform into a bat-like creature before disintegrating. After retrieving the sword, Kane goes inside and finds Carlson feeding his life force to the woman in a very naughty way, so he tries to get his attention. At first Carlson doesn't react, but when he finally snaps out of it, he reaches out for the sword. Then he stabs the woman, ending things for himself too in the process. The wounded woman returns to her spacecraft and releases a flash of blue energy that tears off the top of the church, taking Carlson with her. The duo ascends the column of blue light to the vessel that contains all of the planet's human souls and all the infected begin dying one by one while Kane can only watch the ship get away. Inside the ship, the woman is back in her crystal coffin, sleeping while the energy gathered from the souls fuels the ship so it can leave Earth and head back to the comet it came from.